Y'all remember those coconut shrimp we made just a few days ago? Well, this has been calling my name out late at night, Amy. <laughs> now, seriously, we've got just enough coconut left to make a coconut pie. We're actually gonna use this pie plate, for, not for dredging, but for a pie, yay. And John's taking me out for supper tonight, so that gives us time to make a dessert too, right? And this just isn't any coconut pie. This is John's grandmother's coconut pie. John's mother would make it and take it to family gatherings and everyone would fight over a piece of it. It was always the favorite that came. It has coconut in the meringue, in the pie, as well as in the custard. And then you sprinkle some on top. So every bite has lovely coconut flavor, if you love coconut. <laughs> I know coconuts, either you love it or hate it, right? And we're in a hurry. We're not gonna make it homemade for us. We've done that many times with other pies. Today, I'm using store-bought, and these are wonderful, wonderful little frozen pie crusts. I got it out letting thaw a little while earlier. If you know the night before, right, unlike me, then um, you can put it in your refrigerator and let them thaw. But I did not quite know. I'm starting with the nine inch ungreased pie plate and glass is recommended with these little frozen pie crusts, but if you don't have glass, don't, don't panic or frantic. You could also get you a pre-made uh, pie crust in the little tin as well, certainly could. We just got to bake this first before we make our custard, our coconut custard to go in there. You see, I'm just unrolling the little crust. These are so handy to have in your freezer for last minute pies, right? and I'm kind of pressing it down. Let me take off my rings, guys. And I'm gonna get y'all down here closer because I wanna show you what I do to make a pretty little uh, crust crimp. Just make sure we've got some good hanging over pieces there around each side. And if not, you can kind of press it a bit to help it hang over, just like that. Now I take one of my fingers and then these two fingers, like I'm gonna pinch a pinch of salt or something, and I kind of tuck my crust under just a, a wee bit like that. Then I take my finger and put it between those two pincher fingers. You see how I crimped it like that? Just like that. And I will go all the way around and do it. And it looks right nice, yes it does. If you don't have enough to tuck it under, no worries. Just crimp it and make it look even more homemade, correct? Exactly. That's exactly right. I've sure eaten some real good pies made by lots of people in my life growing up, and that crust may not have looked perfect, but boy, did that pie taste perfect. Yes, it did. I know y'all have done the same. All right, y'all, keep on going. Prick it with the fork, meaning you just go across a few times and even around the little edges. That way we won't get any air pockets in there. Kind of mess up how our pie looks. We try to make it attractive, right? While it's really good and cold, we've got to slip it into a really good and hot oven, 450 degrees Fahrenheit, and it's gonna bake for about 10 or 12 minutes till it's nice and pretty, but, I have done this many times and it sinks down in there, you know, if you don't have some pie weights. And y'all know I, I never have pie weights. But, not some store-bought ones anyway. I've got me a piece of parchment paper. You can use foil, whatever you have like that. And y'all know I use these dry beans and I've had these for years and I let them cool after I bake them in a pie shell. And, Put them back in here and use them again. They were much less expensive than pie weights too. Yes, they were. And all I do is make sure I get them right up to that edge, real high, to keep that crust up on that lip of that pie plate. So it'll be as, as attractive as it can be, huh? Somebody told me I said pretty too much. I'm like, okay. <laughs> oh my goodness. It is pretty. Trying to make a pretty pie, right? I know. Okay, guys. I'll see y'all when this comes out. 
Okay, now for our custard, we are going to turn our fire on about medium, medium low, okay? Get us a saucepan. We're going to start with two cups of milk. One, two. And I'm going to let this heat for just a moment. One other thing I like to add to this mixture is a pinch of salt. Just a pinch. I know that's not traditional with John's grandmother's recipe, but it balances out our sweetness, doesn't it? Okay, it's been heating just a moment. I am going to add one cup plus two tablespoons of sugar. <laughs> you can tell it's an old recipe when it's one cup plus two or one teaspoon or when they always have that extra little amount in there. And I don't know why that is, guys. And if y'all do, please message me, comment, and let us know. But that's how you know that is an old time recipe is if it has that extra little amount in there. Maybe that was the perfect amount of sweetness. I don't know. Then to this, I'm going to add two tablespoons of all-purpose flour, and this will be a thickening agent in here. Also, um, I'm going to add one tablespoon of cornstarch. You can do all cornstarch or all flour. John's grandmother and mother used all flour, three tablespoons of all-purpose flour. But I, cornstarch is just so such a great insurance that it will thicken. So I'm going to add two tablespoons flour, one tablespoon cornstarch, and get that in there before that milk gets too hot. If you do, then that cornstarch will clump, okay? It'll lump up, make us a mess. All right, let's heat this. I'm gonna heat this just long enough Right now I can feel that sugar in the bottom. I'm gonna heat it long enough for all that to dissolve and then we're gonna add us some eggs. In the meantime, you're gonna separate you three eggs. We're gonna have three egg yolks for our custard. And what I love about old time recipes, we will not waste the egg whites that will be our meringue to go on top. So I will show y'all real quick up close just how I separate my eggs. Okay, y'all, we will do this one more time. I'm going to tap my egg like this. That way I, he's tapped in half there, and I can take the top half off, and I start just barely tilting it. You see that white running out. Then I can use this side to go back and forth. Oh, my goodness, this is another double yogurt. I have got me some keeper little chickens out there, don't I? Sweeties, and they're not even full grown doing that. And you see I'm going back and forth. To let all that white get out of there. Y'all excuse my oven, but you know what it's telling us? It says that pie crust is done. Let's get it out. Here we are, guys, 12 minutes later. I can feel that I have no more sugar. It's all dissolved down here in the bottom. So before this gets too warm for our eggs, this is the way it was explained from John's grandmother and mother. You take it off the heat and you add your eggs, egg yolks. Now I would simply put a little bit over in here of that warm milk and stir it and then pour it back in here. But I believe either way will work. And we're gonna get all of that nice yolk. Give it a nice, rich flavor. There we have it. Now stir it in really nicely. That way it didn't scramble our eggs. And now we're gonna continue to stir. Do not leave your custard. It does like to be babysat. Yes, it does. We will be doing some babysitting. This is where you put love into your recipe because you have to love these people to stand here and babysit your little custard. <laughs> so let's put some love into it now, guys. I'm going to trade out to a wooden spoon. We're going to continue to stir and let this warm. Stirring ensures that it doesn't stick to the bottom or try to scramble the eggs in there. And, of course, 
um, this old fashioned recipe just says warm until it thickens. Um, however, I did I did look it up and it says between 160 and 180 degrees Fahrenheit is when it would thicken. So if you're wanting to look for a temperature, but just don't leave it, okay? But I take care of it. You see right now it's just thin and you I will show you here in just a few minutes how it'll be nice and thickened. If you notice at some point it's beginning to stick on the bottom of your pot, mine is not, I can feel that with my spoon, then you need to turn down your heat, okay? You see mine, it's just on about medium low, but now if it doesn't begin to thicken here in just a few minutes, I will ease it up just a bit, but you just have to kind of play around with that, okay? Just one or two minutes in, it's starting to thicken but I've really got to stir because I don't want it to stick. When it starts to thicken, it'll stick real easy. You see how it's beginning to thicken? Yes, just what we're looking for. Okay, y'all, I just turned off my fire. Look, isn't that beautiful, silky smooth? So that's when we take it off the fire. This is thickened. This is how you know the back of your spoon if you can run your finger through it and it stays then it is ready now we have to have some finishers for flavor flavor finishers one thing is one tablespoon of butter you know that's going to be a nice finisher we're going to do one teaspoon of vanilla extract Use a good one, please. Don't use a no-name brand. It will ruin your entire pie, and you work so hard. And then the last and final thing, of course, is the star of the show. And I wanted to say one thing. This is a cup of coconut, sweetened coconut, um, shredded, or flakes, I believe is what it says on the package. But listen, um... John's grandmother and John's mother would just put one quarter cup of coconut in. But John and I love the coconut, so I adapted that part of it too. So I want to be honest and let you know the real old-fashioned way. The only thing I changed, I added a pinch of salt and I added a whole cup of coconut instead of a quarter cup of coconut. Oh yeah, and I did the tablespoon of cornstarch instead of just all three flour. And this is our high filling, creamy and dreamy, coconutty pie filling. All right, let's get this in that cool pie shell. All right, y'all, let me trade out my whisk. Can you see, as long as we can babysit it, we don't let it stick to that bottom. We can put it straight in a pan. But boy, this is like you gotta be on your game. But you see, it gets it nice and thick really fast. Here we have it. It just needs a meringue. Y'all come on, let's go do that. Oh, we've got our egg whites here. Leave them out on the counter so they can stay room temp, okay? You don't want them to be cold. And I'm gonna fluff them a bit with my mixer. And now I'm going to put in my cream of tartar right here. I'm gonna put a quarter teaspoon. This just kind of stabilizes our meringue for us, okay? And I've got me some nice peaks forming. Do y'all see that? Now it's time. I've got six tablespoons of powdered sugar, and I'm going to mix this and slowly add this in. Them. Y'all see how a beef them look, look how they've got nice stiff peaks on there. You see how it's got a little bit of a sheen, almost like a silkiness to it? 
Now we know it is ready. Some things that John's mama did that came from her mama that is a little different than most coconut pies I see is in the meringue. They also put a half teaspoon of vanilla. This is a, a quarter teaspoon, so I had to put two. And then they also put another bit of coconut, just a quarter cup like that, and then save you a little bit because you're going to sprinkle it on top too, like that, and they would fold it in. So you had coconut in every bite, and it's very good like that. So I like to keep that tradition going. Yes, I do. I've got my oven on 400 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm just folding in, as you see. You go to the bottom and pull it up to the top like that. Just fold it in. Don't use your mixer on this meringue because that's a whole lot of air in our little egg whites is all that is. And now we're going to put this on our pie that has been cooling back here a bit for us. Our oven's on 400, like I said, so we can toast the tops of this. It's like little marshmallows, isn't it? So good. Y'all don't let me forget to put that coconut on top of this meringue. Okay, don't let me forget. Let's see if I can get me a smaller apparatus to make us some meringue pretty on top. Let me get over here under y'all. Let's see. Yeah, John's treating me to a supper tonight, so we had time to make a pie. Yes, we did. Pie time. That's a win-win for him, isn't it? <laughs> okay, y'all, and I do take it all the way to the edge and kind of cover your custard. Because y'all know how custard is. It'll get that skin on it, so this meringue just protects it, which is perfect. It's functional, not only delicious, but functional, right? Exactly. So just take it around, around and make it pretty. Oh, I said pretty again, didn't I? Make it lovely and attractive, terrific, delectable, beautiful. And then I like to just take my knife or whatever and I do some, can y'all see what I'm doing? Yeah, just like that. Hmm. <laughs> you I'm came special. in just in time. I'm special. What did hmm. your daddy call meringue, baby, on top of a pie? Calf slobber. <laughs> <laughs> okay, y'all. Let me spin y'all around and do -si do Okay, guys. Into the oven, and we're just going to let the tops get toasty. So I'll see y'all back in just a second. Y'all, we forgot. I forgot. Y'all, I bet y'all were just a hollering at me. Don't forget that coconut. Not too late. Let's go. I can sprinkle it on now. Oh, baby. Oh, my goodness. Mmm. Mmm. <laughs> Ooh, sweetie. That's, that's, that looks great. We've got to show everyone. Ooh. I have got to remember not to eat too much for supper tonight. What? You're taking out, though. You know we're going to eat too much. Oh, I know. I got to have like, this big a piece. <laughs> I told everybody it was a win-win situation for you. You were taking me out, making me happy. Yeah. And so then I had time to make pie. Yeah, it is a win-win for me. It sure is, it baby. Is. What'd you say we were gonna do when we got we're home gonna, from eating? We're gonna get us a big old piece of that and get into bed and get a big old glass of milk. <laughs> Ooh, and then we're gonna get sorry. We're gonna get sorry. And we wonder. We don't really wonder. I don't really wonder. Yeah, we don't wonder. I don't know what the problem is. <laughs> okay, guys, we'll see y'all next time. Bye bye. <laughs>